This is the PO33 from Teenage Engineering, and if you're brand new to this device, there are a wealth of shortcuts that you need to be familiar with for creating beats without throwing this thing out of the window. If you haven't used this device for a long time as well, you're probably gonna run into the same sort of situation. That's exactly what happened to me a few weeks ago. I had to relearn all the little shortcuts, and let's be honest as well, the instruction manual that Teenage Engineering provide is about as useful as a chocolate kettle. So in this video, I'm gonna go through loads of the basic operations that will get you making beats quickly, and if you're new around here as well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm doing a full series on this device at the moment. It's going to be from complete basics all the way up to full beat making. So if that's something that floats your boat, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below to get notifications about my new videos. So I'm going to get this set up at a better camera angle and talk you through all these operations. Many months later. Okay, so here we are with the PO33. And I'm going to start by showing you guys something that you definitely need to know when you start using this device or if you've forgotten about this you need to set the volume of the device before you start using it now this defaults to a very low volume when you unplug or plug in this cable and that is purely to kind of protect your ears so you hold bpm and you can see here mine's all the way up to 16 at the moment this is actually a scale to show you how loud the device is so if i press any of these buttons you can see there it's gone to volume 10 volume 11, volume 12, etc., all the way up to 16. So I'm gonna set that to 16. If you're trying to listen into your SP like I am here and you can't hear anything, it's most likely because you've got the volume set right down like this. So if I hit play now, you can't hear anything, but if I hit say seven, or 11, sorry. There you go, I'm getting signal now and I'm gonna put that all the way to 16. And there we go. So make sure you do that before you start using this device as most likely it's going to be at a low volume and you won't be able to hear it. Right, moving on to the sampling. So we've got two sets of banks here. Each bank has got eight different slots that you can record into. We've got melodic at the top and we've got drum at the bottom. And it's really easy to record into these. All you have to do is press and hold record and press and hold the the bank that you want to record into as well. So I'll go ahead and do a quick example. I'll use the built-in mic and I'll record a little sample into pad three here and you can see what it sounds like. You will notice that the time shows up of how much sample time you've got left while you're recording as well. So look out for that on the screen when I press record. So yeah, you hold record, you hold three. This is a test, I'm recording into pad three. Okay, so just my own voice there. And if you wanna hear the original recording at that tone or pitch is probably the right word, you press five. This is a test, I'm recording into, this is a, this is a test, this is a test, I'm recording into pad three. There we go. And if I press the other buttons on the scale, this is a test. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. I'm this is a test. This is a this is this is this is a this is this is a test. So that's how you'd record into that bank. I'll just quickly show you drum as well. So record and we'll do 15. This is a test recording into pad 15. What that'll do is chop this over the pad 16 times. This is a test recording into pad 15. And that's how you record into the each individual banks there. So nice and straightforward. So say if we've done something wrong and we want to delete those, how do we do that? Well, we use record again and we have to hold sound, record and the bank that we want to delete. So let's say this, sound three, we want to delete that. This is a test. I'm recording into pad three. We're going to do record, sound, and you can see there on the screen now that it says Dell for delete. And we're going to do three. So let's check that that's gone. There we go, that's no longer in that bank. And the other one that recorded into was 15. This is a test record. Let's go ahead and delete that as well. So record, sound, and 15. And again, that's gone as well. So that's how you record in samples and delete them as well. So the next thing is sample manipulation. So I'm gonna go ahead and record something in again because I actually need something again. So record three. This is to show you sample manipulation. Okay, so I've got that recorded in now. This is to show you sample manipulation. And we're going to be using the effects button here. Now, there's a few options with this, and each one has two options inside of it because there's one control for each dial. So filter, there's two different options. Trim, that's start and end, so that's really easy to, do, to understand. That's the start, the trim point, that's the end trim point. And tone, or ton or tone, is pitch and volume. So when you record a sample in, you're most likely going to have to adjust the volume because it records it in quite quiet. This is to show you sample manipulation. This is to show you sample manipulation. So you can go ahead straight away pretty much and just use the right hand dial and 
you will notice that you'll be able to put the volume higher. This is to show you sample manipulation. So you can hear the difference in that. So if your samples are sounding quite quiet, make sure you do this. Put the volume up for each sample when you record into it. So we've done that. And what else can we do? Filter. So this changes from a low pass filter to a high pass filter. And if you want to turn it off again, you have to hit the middle where it says no filter. So this is to show you sample manipulation. 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 So there we go, nice and easy on that one. And then I think this is resonance. It's got res. This is to show you sample manipulation. This is to show you. This is to show. This is to show. This is to show you sample manipulation. But for some reason, now this is the second time that I've sampled in and tried this. I'm not getting any noticeable difference with the audio when I'm using this res. This is to show you sample manipulation. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on with the res on this. That should make a difference. It used to on my machine, but for some reason that doesn't appear to be actually doing anything to the samples at the moment. If I'm doing something wrong, leave it in the comments below, but I can't figure out why res isn't really doing anything for my samples at the moment. This anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is ton on here. You can change the this pitch. This is to show you sample manipulation. This is to show you sample manipulation. This is to show you sample manipulation. So you can hear there a really nice smooth pitching that you can do on this device, which is one of the reasons why it's so amazing and the right hand dial in this particular setting is the volume so there are all the things that you can do to manipulate the samples you literally just have to cycle through the effects button and you can change some of the parameters now make sure you do this before you record into the sequencer because if you apply those after you've put them into the sequencer they won't actually work you'll have to go back and re-enter them into the sequencer the sequencer is kind of like a recorder in a way it isn't just referencing the samples that you've got in the pads it kind of makes a recording of what you've performed and yeah in order to add to that recording you have to manipulate the samples and then re-add them into that sequence again it's kind of weird how that works but um unfortunately that's just the way it does work so yeah if you make any changes like that after you've created your pattern you'll have to go back and re-add them in so that's how you record in, delete your recordings and manipulate your samples let's go over to the pattern area now and i'll show you a couple of things here pattern chaining is really really useful on this device i think you can have chains up to about 300 if i remember correctly it's somewhere in that region i think it's about 250 to 300 which is just bonkers and the way that you do that is you press and hold pattern and you can see here that all the patterns that have made are lit up and you literally just tap out the sequence while you're holding it so say i want one one two there we go i've done one one two there and now if i play that <laughs> That will go round and round infinitely and keep playing that particular pattern chain. If I want to go ahead and change that, it's really easy to overwrite. You just hold pattern again and one and then two. You make your new pattern chain. Let's play that now. So that's how you go ahead and make your full beats. So I'd hold pattern and I'd make a chain like this maybe. And you can hear now. You can hear there that I'm starting to build a B and it's sounding quite nice. It's got individual parts and I can chain between them and I can make whatever order that I want to make so super super handy stuff there if you want to copy a pattern which is something you'll do very often you've got to do right at the bottom here pattern and choose where you want to paste it to now the pattern that you want to copy has to be already selected so say if I want to copy pattern one pattern one and then right pattern and I'm going to paste that into this one here that's empty and if I go to that one now <laughs> And if I go to the first one, you can hear they're both the same. Now, if you want to clear that, if you don't want that anymore, if you want to delete a pattern, you have to press record pattern. And you can see here that clear has come up on the screen, CLR. And you just press the one that you want to clear. You don't get any confirmation. You just have to uh, trust the device that it has done it. So if I go to pattern again and go to nine and press play. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you do have to just go back do it again so pattern nine again there we go it's cleared it now so sometimes you will have to check if it has actually done what you've told it to do sometimes 
you haven't pressed the buttons properly because they're quite difficult to press, especially when you haven't got a case like mine. Okay, the two last things that I want to mention is this right button. You can press and hold right while a pattern is playing and you can thumb in sounds using the 16 pads here. Or if you press this once, you can see here that this enables right mode and what you can do now is just add stuff into the sequence. You can see there it's letting me add things on to the step sequencer at whatever position I want them to be in. I don't actually know what sound I'm programming in there, so I'm just going to take those off. And then if you want to get out of right mode, you can just press that and there we go, we're out of it. And you can just jam along then and do whatever you want. Also effects as well, while the device is playing, if you want to just jam effects, you don't want them recorded to the sequence, make sure that this square is not active when you're playing a playing your pattern like this. <laughs> You don't want that square to be showing, otherwise the effects will actually write themselves to that pattern. So take that off. And then to use the effects, you just hold the effects button and press whichever effects you want to apply. If you do accidentally apply effects when this mode is on, you can remove them. You'll notice on this device there's only 15 effects and the 16th effect is clear. If I can get that to show, maybe I need it to be playing. There we go, it came up saying none, I don't know if you saw that. So if you write effects by accident and you want to take them off, make sure write mode is on, play your loop, hold the effects button and hold 16 and that will clear the effect as well. So that's everything that I want to mention for this one guys. That's pretty much most of the operations that you'll be doing day to day with this device when you're making beats. I tend to use pretty much all of those if I'm making a beat and yeah it can be a bit annoying trying to remember them all but hopefully this video is a good refresher or if you're new to this device hopefully it shows you a lot of the controls that you need to be making beats. If you've got any shortcuts that I think I should have mentioned in this video, leave them in the comment below, just so other people that are learning this device can pick up on those as well. Obviously, I'll be going into more detail about this in the series later on and looking at different areas in more detail, so stick around for those videos. But until next time, guys, that's it for this one. Keep making beats, and I will be back with more videos soon. Peace!